Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. A very warm welcome to our webinar, The Business Case for MQTT, Why MQTT Can Accelerate Your Digital Transformation. Thank you for taking time today to attend this webinar. It is a pleasure to have you all. I am Jayshri Hegde, moderating this webinar today. Allow me to introduce you to the speaker for today, Ian Skerritt, who is the VP of Marketing at HiveMQ. Welcome, Ian. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, before we kick off, I would like to share that we are recording this session. The webinar slide deck as well as the recording will be shared uh, with you all in a follow-up email. Feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A pod and kindly refrain from using um, uh, it for asking questions in the chat pod. You can find both the Q&A pod as well as the chat pod in the control section below. Uh, there will be a dedicated Q&A session after the presentation. So during the Q&A, we will run a short poll. I request you all to participate. Now, without further ado, I will hand it over to Ian. Welcome, everyone. Hey, thank you, Jayashri, and, and, and thank you for every, everyone for, for joining. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to, to this webinar and, and, and hearing the feedback on, on the presentation. Um, what we're going to talk to, uh, today about is, is the business case for MQT. Um, just uh, Jayashri, kind of introduce myself quickly. Um, so I'm the Vice President of Marketing at, at HiveMQ. I've been with the, the company for three and a half years. I've got lots of experience in, in the IoT industry. Um, some of you might know, I, I used to be at the Clips Foundation where I started the, the IoT open source community within the Clips, Clips Foundation that's heavily involved in, with, with MQT2. Um, so to start off, and I really the, the presentation is divided into to, 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 two main, main topics. One is um, looking at the business drivers for IoT digital transformation. Um, and in Hive and Q, kind of, we talk to thousands of companies um, who are really trying to start their, their IoT journey. Um, and over the years, we've kind of tried to, we've noticed some patterns of why they're changing, what, what's the motivation. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of go through some of these motivations, these drivers that, that we're seeing in, in the customers and in the industries. Um, and, and they often differ based on the, the industry that we're in. So, so the first industry that, that we're going to talk about, kind of what are the business drivers for, for IoT uh, transformation, uh, is the manufacturing. Um, probably in the last two and a half, three years, we've seen an incredible interest in, in manufacturing, um, in the manufacturing industry um, for, for MQ and, and, and Hive MQ. Um, and there's really probably about kind of five main drivers that we see over and over again when, when we talk to these clients. The first being um, kind of they're really trying to use the data from their factory floor, from the plant floor to improve production output, right? So they're trying to kind of get more capacity through the, 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 the factories um, with, with the same, same, same capacity. Um, so that's kind of one, one of the drivers that, that we're seeing. Similarly, they're trying to lower the production costs, right? They're, they're using the, the, the data, they're trying to aggregate, integrate uh, the, the data from, from different pieces of equipment um, and really to see how can, they can optimize the production processes to, to lower, lower the production costs. Um, as if people in the manufacturing industry know downtime is, is kind of a huge concern um, because if, if your plant's down, you're losing revenue. Um, if your plant is not kind of producing good quality, your, your revenue per unit is, is going down, your cost per unit is, is going up. Um, and so a lot of the, the, the drivers are kind of, can they use things like predictive maintenance applications to plan downtime, plan the maintenance in advance um, and to be much more efficient when, when the, the, the plant comes down for, for maintenance. Um, the, the fourth area is um, around global plant awareness. Um, a lot of our customers have factories around the world. Um, one of our automotive customer, manufacturing customers has approximately 100 factories around the world. Um, and they need better insight into the, the, the trends across all of their factories, right? So, so they can have with capacity planning, they can help with supply chain optimization. So they're really trying to kind of, kind of get the data across all the factories to normalize the data. To, to basically um, look at the trends across their entire production capacity. 
And the final one is, and I think this is kind of an interesting one, is, is that in the manufacturing industry, there's, there's a huge concern about retaining talent and attracting um, talent, it's certainly the technical talent that, that runs the, 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 the equipment. The equipment's becoming more and more sophisticated, um, and they're, they're, quite frankly, their they're workforce is aging. Um, and so they, a lot of their, our customers are seeing kind of using more modern techniques as a way to attract the next generation uh, of talent. <clears throat> Similar to manufacturing it is kind of more in the industrial automation. So I'm, we're talking kind of, but I would, I'm going to call it remote, remote asset management. So things like uh, oil and gas, kind of solar farms, wind farms. Um, basically, you're 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 managing a very high value asset um, from in, in, in a remote remote location. A lot of these assets are, are kind of have existing command and control systems, data systems um, running them. Um, and, and a lot of our comp uh, the companies that we talk to are looking to kind of upgrade them. Um, they need to be more efficient. They need to be more reliable. They want to move away from older technologies like, like Modbus um, to something uh, a, a lot more modern. Um, and, and so they're, they're looking at MQT um, for, 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 for doing that. Um, they're also looking to, to get more real-time awareness, um, kind of the, the regulations, um, certainly around kind of environmental regulations. So kind of oil spills, for instance, or oil leaks, right? You need to have real-time awareness of your asset operation to, to adhere to, 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 to regulations often. Um, also things like predictive maintenance. Um, if you have to send a crew out to do maintenance on an asset, um, that can be very costly, especially if the asset doesn't need to, to be to, to be maintained, right? If it's, if it's working properly. Conversely, if, if the asset breaks and you have to send it out, and it's an emergency, big time emergency, right? Um, so can they get more real time awareness of the, of the asset operation to, to help with, with the maintenance? Um, and the final area is, is that kind of security is top of mind for everyone. Um, and so having um, and, and one kind of component of security is being able to kind of update these assets, the, the firmware of these assets. To, to do uh, security fixes. Um, so, so these are kind of some of the key drivers we find in, in remote ass asset management. <clears throat> Moving out of kind of manufacturing and industrial automation, we deal with a lot of uh, connected car and mobility vendors. Um, so companies like BMW and, and Audi are, have standardized on having Q and MTT for, for doing um, connected cars. Um, and so we've got a lot of insight of what, what's driving um, the, the, these companies. Um, but beyond, beyond just the automobile OEMs, we deal with companies like Beat, which is a kind of a competitor to, to Uber. Um, it's very popular in, in South America for, for ride, ride sharing. Um, and so there's kind of four main things that, that we see here. Um, increased revenue and new, new revenue streams. A lot of the car companies are looking at connectivity to basically introduce new services. Um, the pay, for, pay for service um, uh, as, as new revenue streams, um, inc include improving the customer experience, right? Um, kind of it, people are expecting digital capabilities for, for their cars, right? Um, and kind of how do you kind of go about doing that? Um, how do you be, become, and to the next point, competitive positioning, right? Kind of the, the, the car industry is moving in this direction. Everyone needs to be moving in this direction for that. And the final driver here is, is that um, kind of they're using the telemetry data from the cars to improve the cars, right? Um, they're, they're kind of using the, the, the real, you know, it doesn't have to be real time, but the aggregation of data to understand how the cars are performing and, and using that in the next generation of, of vehicles. <laughs> the, the next industry is transportation. Um, in the transportation, uh, this is really transportation logistics. And so this, we, we deal with, with trucking companies, we deal with logistic companies, like um, uh, parcel delivery companies. Um, we're, we're dealing with railways. We're dealing with um, kind of smarter states for public transit. Right? So this is a pretty broad uh, category um, for, 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 for the industry. Um, and very relevant here is efficiency. Uh, kind of reducing carbon footprint is top of mind in this industry. It's one of the major drivers in, in this industry. And can they use better data, get captured data, better data from their fleets, from, from their vehicles to improve uh, route planning, to kind of reduce the, the amount of time, reduce the number of, of, of kind of fuel that they need to do, use to, to kind of power the vehicle um, through route planning is a, is a very important driver. Um, 
theft and, and lost cargo is top of mind because this comes to, to the, the bottom line. Um, so if they can get better get visibility of, of where the, the cargo is and where the cargo is kind of, kind of is moved, um, they can certainly re reduce the amount of theft and, and lost cargo. Improving customer services is, is for, for some of the leading companies that we deal with is, is very top of mind, right? If, if you can kind of show where the vehicle is, right, you can kind of give more assurance to your customers that um, uh, the, 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 the parcel or the, kind of the, the, the goods is going to be arriving at a, at a certain time. The final thing, and, and this is relevant for, for parcel delivery, but it's also relevant for, 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 for humans, is a term called mobility as a service. And this is really about intermodal integration, kind of moving from rail to bus um, to, to truck, right? Um, and having this consistent experience um, for the cargo or, or, or for, 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 for the person. Um, so these are kind of some of the drivers that we see in, 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 in this industry. <clears throat> And the final area that, that I'm going to talk about, it's just for the business drivers, is connected products. So, so at HuddenQ, we deal with a lot of companies that are building new connected products. Um, so we, we, we deal with a company called Matternet that does uh, drone, makes, makes drones. We deal with an industrial dishwasher, uh, a company called Winterhalter that, that's um, hooking up um, uh, <clears throat> their, their industrial dishwashers. Um, to to the, the the cloud, we were dealing with a, a number of, of medical product companies um, out there, and there's really kind of three things that we see kind of we're driving them to to change um, for for their IoT transformation. Um, one is the increased revenue, so they're, they're kind of they're enabling this connected product. Um, it might be a completely new product, right? Um, that, that's been being built, um, or they're using an existing product that they can kind of update and have better connectivity to in introduce new, new digital services for, for their customers. Um, improved customer experience absolutely is, is a key here. Um, we'll go, go, we'll talk a bit about uh, Liberty Global, which is a, a digital platform for, for media. Um, that used, used MPT to, to do um, improve customer experience. Um, and the final thing is we're seeing more and more as is, is these companies really want to push out data to their, their, um, their products. Um, and they want to do this at scale. They'll have millions of devices out there that they need to push out kind of very customized data to the, 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 the device, be it a medical product or, or, or something else. Um, and they need to do this at scale. Um, and, and so kind of how do you do that, right? And, and so, so these are some of the drivers that, that we see repeatedly in, in our customer setting. And I think it's really reflective of, 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 of the industry. Um, we certainly deal with a lot of other industries, but I think these are some of the key ones that, that we see all, over and over again. Um, <clears throat> so let me just take a drink of water here. So what I wanted to do now is kind of go and talk a bit about kind of, so how does MQBT and we're going to get into the technology of MQTT um, to solve this. Um, and, and so just at a high level, because if, if there's anyone new here, um, I'm just going to spend one slide on what MQTT is, and then we'll kind of get, in, get into more of the, the details. So uh, MQTT is basically the, the kind of the de facto IoT messaging protocol uh, today. Um, all the major IoT platforms um, support MQTT and, and promote MQTT as, as the main way for ingesting uh, IoT data in, in, into the platform. Um, it's an open standard. It's, it's standardized at, at Oasis. There's many open source implementations uh, available for it, right? So it's, it's freely available. It's, it's, it's really easy to, to use. It's based on a publish subscribe protocol that we'll go into a bit more detail, which I think really promotes um, a lot of the benefits that we're, we're going to be talking about. Um, and one of the primary ones is this, this concept of decoupled architecture. Over and over again, um, we, we see certainly in manufacturing, um, there's this kind of the, the integrations between the different components really lead to what I would call a spaghetti architecture. And MQT with a pub sub architecture really breaks, breaks that down. It was originally developed in, in the oil and gas industry for oil and gas um, pipeline monitoring, and it's really successfully expanded quite far from, from that, those routes into to many, many, many different in industries. Um, so let's kind of go into kind of what we, what are typically the benefits we see for, for MQT. Um, so it, it's the top of it is it's very lightweight and efficient, right? So so you can use um, 
MQTT on very small devices. Um, the, the, the footprint of, of MQTT is, is very small in, in the uh, kilobytes, hundreds of kilobytes. Um, so it's, it's very small. We'll talk about it's very efficient in terms of bandwidth um, too, which is, is repeatedly kind of one of the main reasons people kind of, in, kind of really appreciate MQTT. It's bi-directional, right? So basically you, you can send very easily um, information from, from the clients, from the devices to the cloud, but also the cloud can send, send information back to, to the to the clients and you can actually do, and which is really important if you're doing fleet management right and you can kind of scope it so you can say okay I only want to send a message to trucks in Germany or trucks in, in the US um, so that, that's very kind of intuitive to, to do with 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 MQTT. it's reliable we'll talk a lot about that um, in terms of no message losses um, it's scalable, right? So a lot of the, 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 the protocols out there, you know, HTTP for instance, right, really are not geared, we're not designed for IoT, right? Um, and so you need to have a protocol that can scale into the hundreds of thousands, millions of, of connections, simultaneous connections. And, and that's really how, how MQTT is designed. It works very well over on unreliable networks. As, as we said, it was, it was designed in, in the oil and gas industry. We're so basically connecting over, um, I believe it was satellite at the time. Um, so it's um, kind of, it works in, in that environment. Um, and it's very kind of enabled for security, for, for kind, of, kind of TLS, kind of certificate authentication, authorization um, is, is very easy to do with, with MQTT. So that's kind of the technical benefits. Kind of what are the business, business benefits that we see people achieving with, with MQTT? Um, and these are the five I'm going to go through in detail. So we're going to talk about kind of reducing network costs, um, improving the customer experience, reducing the cost of lost data. Um, lost data can be a big, big deal for, for many industries. The setup time. Um, so kind of if you've got a, a factory, if you need to add a new, new, new piece of equipment, what's that setup time and cost of doing that? And also kind of the, the, the running of a system that has to handle kind of say 200,000 connections, right? How many CPUs do you need? How, kind of how big of an infrastructure to, do you need for, for that? Um, so let's, let's kind of dive into each one of these in, in, in a bit more detail. Um, so in terms of reducing network cost, this is really applicable for things like remote asset management, um, uh, connected car mobility, um, and, and connected products. Um, if they are accessing the data through cellular networks, satellite networks, um, or even just, just kind of not very stable uh, uh, ethernet net networks. Um, but but for, for a networking cost, if you're going through satellite or cellular, um, that can be a huge portion of your operating cost, right? So companies are looking at that saying, okay, how can we reduce the, the operating cost of, of kind of this amount of networking bandwidth that we, that we require to, to manage our, our specific our, our assets. And to start it off, I think, so MQTT is designed to be kind of, the message size is, is much smaller. So in comparison to, 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 to HTTP. So we, um, this is on our, our website. We did an, ass an assessment comparing um, uh, the message size of MQTT with, with HTTP. And you can see here the kind of, the way MQTT works, right, is the, the connection is a bit heavier weight, right? But once you have made the connection, each message published is substantially less than, than HTTP. And, this, and what are we talking about is, is the payload uh, descriptor, right? right? So the, 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 the message kind of the, the data in the, in, in the empty message or in the HTTP um, uh, request, right, that, that's not included here. That would be kind of um, uh, dependent on the, the application. Um, but this is kind of the, the, the payload format, the message format, the, 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 the cost of, of that. Um, and so you can see from, from this chart that it can be up to 10, 10 times larger using HTTP. So off the bat, right, you're seeing kind of a huge reduction in bandwidth requirement by just using MQTT messages right, compared to HTTP. There's actually another uh, uh, survey. So a, a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Hottel um, did a survey, I think it was back in 2019, and he basically did a comparison of uh, uh, four different um, protocols, OPC, HTTP, MQTT, um, and, and Modbus, and basically used the same use case and re-implement it uh, with, these, with these different um, protocols. 
Um, and so you can see from, from this, um, MTT, right, is we're substantially less than OPC rate. You should be in Modbus, the, the release version of, of, of Modbus. Um, and so this is basically kind of the number of bytes required just to send a, a single value um, a, a across the wire. Um, the other key thing around MTT, and this is where, where the pub sub comes in, is the difference in how um, kind of the network bandwidth requirement for between pub sub protocols and pull response protocol. Um, so let me just kind of explain uh, briefly what, what I mean by that. Um, so HTTP, Modbus, um, and OPC are based on what we call pull response. So there's a server that will pull the assets, the, the clients, um, for information, and the clients will respond to that. And what you have to do is you have to set up a time to, to do that, right? So, so typically you would set up, depending on kind of how important um, the information is, say every 10 seconds, every five seconds, every five minutes, uh, it really is at, would be application specific, right? Um, but you, you're doing that regardless of the client status, right? Um, it doesn't matter if their clients changed information, right? You still have to do this pull response. And that's very inefficient. It's very inefficient. It's also not real-time information. If, you, if you're pulling every five minutes, right? If something changes just after you pull, you've got, you're waiting for another five minutes before you get the results, right? Um, with M MQDT, um, it's completely different. The client publishes the information and you can publish information only when the value changes, right? So if you've got a client that is, for instance, kind of, let's say a temperature sensor, sensor right? And the, the, the normal temperature should be 70 degrees or, or kind of Fahrenheit or 20 degrees uh, Celsius, right? And as long as it's that temperature, you shouldn't actually need to publish anything, right? So you only want the outliers. So, um, and so you can kind of build the client to say, only publish if the temperature changes by two degrees, right? So you're not incurring bandwidth at all, right? Because you don't need that information, right? And so we've seen, we've worked with companies who have done uh, the, the, the change from Modbus to, to MQT, and they're seeing actually up to a 90% reduction in bandwidth just because um, the, the difference between uh, pull response and, and then pops up. So it's a very significant change in, in, in the cost there. Um, so back to the the um, the, um, <clears throat> the the survey that was published uh, before um, that I referred to by, by Jonathan Hoddle. Um, so they did kind of an experiment with with kind of over the length of the time, right? And the asset they were doing, right, kind of it only needed to publish once or twice during the day. But HTTP, OPC, UA, Modbus were doing the pull response. Right, um, that really kind of added a lot of kilobytes um, requirement to, to 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 kind of keep keep the the system running. Right, so so a bit significant change uh, for, for that. So that's for 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 network costs, and and that really is if you're through a cellular network or satellite network um, where, where that becomes an issue. If you're on Ethernet, kind of, right, it's kind of, you're not kind of networking is is still an issue, but you're probably not going to see a significant benefit uh, in terms of, of the, the networking uh, costs that you have there. Um, so let's talk about uh, kind of improving customer experience. Um, and I'm just going to kind of talk about kind of two customers that we've, we've been working with um, um, to kind of give you a sense of what they've been able to achieve. So BMW is one of our oldest customers. Um, and um, they came to us um, a number of years ago. They had an existing uh, um, car sharing app um, called, um, and it was based on SMS and HTTP. And what was happening is, is that from your mobile phone app, um, it was taking up to 30 seconds to unlock your car door, um, which is completely un, kind of unacceptable from a customer experience. Like, I don't know about you, but when I kind of go to my car and kind of press a button to unlock the car door, I, I want the car door unlocked, right? I'm not going to wait 30 seconds to, to get connectivity to, to kind, of, um, kind of have the, the, the car door respond, right? So, so they were having a lot, a lot of problems. They moved to having Q and MQT. And now they basically have subsequent response to, to unlock, unlock the car door. And we'll go into kind of why, why that's the case. Um, another example is, is Beat. Um, I, I kind of referred to them earlier in the, 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 the conversation. Um, these, 
Beats a, a ride hailing app um, that competes with Uber. It's very, very popular in, in, in South America. Um, and, and they had a, a big issue with um, kind of support tickets with drivers, right? They were getting, uh, there's lots of uh, reliability issues. There's lots of lost messages. Um, they moved to HiveMQ and MQT and they saw a reduction of 66% of support tickets. So here at the customer experience, it would be the driver. Um, right? So they significantly improved customer experience uh, with their drivers kind of opening a lot less uh, support tickets um, due to moving to, to MQT and HiveMQ. Hive um, so, so why is this the case, right? So, so it's back to, if you're connecting the, these, these types of products with, with SMS and HTTP, Let's kind of go through the, the process here, right? So, um, so basically, you have some type of app, um, typically a mobile app, right? That would you press a button that would be connecting to some type of server um, in, in the cloud, and that server, in, in, in using SMS and HTTP, would need to send an SMS to to the device to the the client, right? So, likely a car in, in, in this situation, right? And that SMS will have a, some type of URL in it. Um, and when you have the, the, the URL, um, so that the client, the HTTP kind of client here, the car, will basically kind of simulate clicking on the URL to, to make the request back to the server, right? And that server will then say, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to un unlock the, the, the car door, right? And this could, like, I don't know about you, but SMS is very unreliable. It can take, take time to, to receive SMSs. Um, and the thing is, is that whenever um, you lose the HTTP connectivity, you have to do this all over again, right? So this is where kind of, uh, BMW and Beat were, were kind of getting hung up, right? And this is why it was actually taking upwards to, to, to 30 seconds to, to, to do this, right? And with, 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 with um, MQT, it's completely different. Um, MQT has the concept of a persistent session. So you, you basically kind of make the connection, um, and even if, if the, the, the network um, goes down, the session information ret is retained. And so when the network comes back up, you just need to send the, 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 the broker knows how to send a session reconnect uh, message to kind of, kind of re restart the, the connection. So much more efficient in terms of, of the hand, there's no basically handshake that's done. The session is, is, is maintained. Um, and so this is kind of at the heart of why NGT is very well suited for um, things that move around and remote things, um, because uh, at this, this concept of a persistent session. Okay. And I think that's really at the heart of kind of improving uh, the, the customer experience. Another example for improving customer experience was, was Liberty Global. Um, so Liberty Global is a, a large digital media company. So basically, they put set-top boxes in, in people's houses. Um, and they needed to move to an environment um, for their customers. Their customers were moving between devices, right? So you're watching a video on your phone, you get home, you want to continue to watch the video on your big screen in your, in your living room. Um, you might have a tablet that you want to kind of continue watching it. So they wanted to have this consistent seamless experience between the devices, independent of where the person is, independent of what network they, they, they join on. Right? And they're able to use um, MQTT to, to, to be able to do that, right? Because basically each one of these devices becomes a client, right? That can have a persistent session and Liberty Global can kind of, sim kind of simultaneously and transparently send out the configuration information, the current configuration information, the real-time information that the, the customer's using to that device in advance of them kind of requiring it. Um, so the, 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 the next generation device that was rolled out has been incredibly successful um, for them. Um, and their customer satisfaction scores has been, been, been very, very high for, for that. Okay. Um, so, so the next area I wanna talk about is uh, cost of loss uh, uh, data. Um, and so with, with these, these large systems, uh, lots of data moving to and from the, the cloud, uh, lost data can become an issue. Um, and so what is the cost, right? So well, regulatory compliance is absolutely important in some, some industries, right? So if you are a pharmaceutical company and you need to kind of show your audit logs are com com completely completed right, with no lost data to get um, regulatory compliance, right? 
that's it. That's a big deal, right? You need to make sure you have a system that you're not going to lose data. Data. Um, customer experience. Kind of, we'll, we'll, we look at beat, and we'll, we'll look at beat again, right? Um, if you're losing messages from from different clients, right, your customer experience is, is going to go down. Um, lost revenue, right? If 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 you're not um, kind of getting the, the the messages out to uh, drivers that are delivering packages, right? Um, you could start to be losing losing um, revenue, and things like kind of just the data accuracy, missing key events are are definitely um, important in, in 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 different types of industries. Um, so again, kind of beat um, was was having a lot of uh, of lost messages. Um, and when they moved to MQTT and hide them queue, they were able to reduce it by, by half, by, by 50%. So significant um, reduction in, in lost messages. Um, and I think kind of depending on the case study and the, the use case, you can see we, we have a lot of customers that, that can get to kind of basically no loss data, um, which is very important for, 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 for some of these, these, these companies. Um, so how does MQTT do, do that? Um, well, in, built into the specification are three levels, uh, QoS levels, quality of service levels. Um, and so depending on your application, you can select what QoS level that, 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 that you want to use, right? Um, so if, it, if, it's, if it's not kind of important, if you're really just transmitting information, um, uh, kind of QoS zero is, is probably kind of at, at most ones, you're just publishing kind of fire and forget, right? Um, if you need more more reliability, right? There, there's QS one and, and two, right? So that built into the specification is the concept of reliability, um, which, for instance, something like uh, HTTP doesn't have that concept. You would have to build that around HTTP. Um, the other thing is the the concept of queuing messages, right? So um, if you're trying to send a message on um, from a client and you're connected to a cellular network, but you don't have connectivity, right? That client still needs to be able to work, right? Um, because you want to be able to send the message and then just move on, right? Um, and so um, an MQTT client can be kind of developed such that. If the connect, if the the, um, the 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 network's not available, you can just leave it there. And when the connect comes back, yeah, uh, the network comes back up. There's a reconnect uh, event that happens, and we'll know to publish it out, right? So, so very important in terms of of kind of things that are moving around, where kind of it, they still need to function, um, even though there's not a, not a network. And similarly, on the brokers, it's kind of all entity brokers can can, can uh, have the concept of, of message queuing, right? And so, if if a client is is publishing a message, um, and a subscribing client is not available because the network's not available, the broker will queue the message, right? So you're not losing the message. So that that message that was being published isn't just kind of evap doesn't evaporate because the subscribing client isn't connected. It can be queued. Um, and then when the, the network comes back up, the broker will forward on to the subscribing client. So very powerful in terms of, of making sure the system works, right, irregardless of, of, a, of a, the network access, um, which again is in IoT, it's, that's really a unique characteristics in IoT, I think, that often doesn't happen in kind of the, the web of things, right? Um, so, and I think this is where MGT really, really starts to shine. So, in, in, in setup time, so we'll, we'll move on to, 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 to the next um, area. Um, and, and, and this is really kind of in terms of, I think, kind of big manufacturing and industrial automation um, uh, scenarios. Um, in kind of the, the manufacturing world is characterized by a lot of integrations between um, and, and there are different levels of integration. This is very simplified. Um, but often what happens is, is there's different vendors uh, of different kind of pieces of hardware um, that need to integrate, integrate, and it's often pairwise integrations to different applications. And there could be different tiers of applications. And this, it, it becomes really much of a spaghetti architecture. And what happens is that, that if, if you integrate a new client into the system, there's a tremendous amount of effort needed to redo these integrations for that new client. Um, and it's, it's time consuming, it's costly to, to do, right? And similar, our customers are starting to measure 
uh, that setup cost, the cost of, of, of adding a new asset in, into their system, right? And that can be, become a very substantial cost, right? So can they start to start to reduce that? And this is really where, where the entity um, published subscribe um, architecture um, and the decoupled architecture really starts to shine, right? And so basically the, the broker is, becomes the center of, of the system, right? So the, all the clients connect to the broker, they publish to the broker on, on different topics, and then applications don't know about the clients. They just subscribe to topics that they that they need to, to get, receive the information on. Um, so it's completely decoupled. You're not integrating a client directly to an application. You are basically connecting the clients to a broker, um, and you connect the applications to a broker, and you get flow the information through entity topics. Okay, so very important kind of differentiation um, of, of how MGT does a decoupled architecture. So when you add in a new, new system, um, you're basically just adding in to, you're kind of connecting to the broker, you're publishing on kind of existing topics that are known, um, and the applications will be able to pick, pick up the topics that they're interested in that this new client will, will be publishing. Um, a, 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 a company um, that we've been working with um, did an experiment where they took a system that was heterogeneous from different vendors, a system that was all from one vendor, um, and then uh, an entity system. And they, they realized two to five X reduction in setup time when they went to an entity. This is using Sparkplug, which um, we can get into it to, to later, um, but um, but using an MQD broker as as the kind of with, with a decoupled architecture, they significantly reduced their, their setup time uh, for introducing a new new asset in, in, into their system, which is really important for for for, for these types of, of, of customers. And then the final area I want to talk about um, is infrastructure cost. Um, so. Um, Kind of cloud resources are, are um, kind of can can be an issue, um, uh, and so how do you reduce the, the cost that you're you're is, um, incurring to running these large systems? Um, and we recently were working with a company, um, a large multinational, who was using ActiveMQ um, to connect their system of two hundred thousand. Connect connections, so I'm okay. Saying it's connections, and they were having they were using 256 CPUs to, to do this, which is a huge system, like a massive system. Um, they're having actually, by the way, reliability problems with it too, right? But but regardless, it was it was an incredible investment for for them just just from the cloud infrastructure, data center infrastructure um, to keep these these this this system system running. When they moved to MQT and HiveMQ. They were able to dramatically reduce them down down to sixty four CPUs and to required to maintain a um, much more reliable and high, higher availability system of two hundred thousand simultaneous connections. So again, it's it's MQT and high, brokers like Hive and Q are, have been architected to do IoT use cases. Um, systems like ActiveMQ, RabbitMQ. Um, are really architected for a lot less connections. Um, to, we've, we often will find that um, after 10,000 connections, um, these systems start to break down. They're, they're not, they're geared for kind of microservices integration, uh, data centers uh, integration of, of different applications. They're not geared for kind of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of connections coming in to, to, to their, the, 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 the server. Um, so um, big, big, big difference in terms of the cost there. So an, another consideration. Um, so, um, so those are the, the, the areas that, that I wanted to cover. Um, uh, kind of in summary, um, I think hopefully I kind of convinced you that the MQT has, has absolutely become the de facto standard for, for IRT. Um, I'm hoping that we've kind of shown that um, the way MQT has been structured and, and designed it really does pro provide business benefit for your IoT project. Um, 
we would love to talk to people about um, MDT and how we do. That's what we do. Um, we have uh, a list of resources. Um, we have a um, a lot of people come to our site to learn about MQTT. Um, if, if you're just learning about MQTT, um, we, I recommend uh, to look at our ebook. Um, we also have all the comments of the ebook on, online and on our web pages. Um, if you're interested in Sparkplug, just, just briefly, Sparkplug is, is a specification really specific to the manufacturing of the industrial automation world. And it sits on top of MQTT to define payload formats and um, kind of the life cycle of, of devices. Um, we've got lots of information about Sparkplug um, on our, on our uh, website, um, and we do a lot of customer stories. So if, if you're interested in more details about what our HMQ customers are doing with MQTT, um, please vi visit the, 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 the site there. Okay. Um, so Jeshri, I think I'll, I'll turn it back to you, um, and then we can kind of start to kind of entertain some more questions too. But um, certainly, if people have questions, please please put them in uh, the Q and A. Cool. Thank you, Ian, for a fantastic presentation. I'm sure attendees got a lot of insights into the benefits of MQTT and how various interest industries like manufacturing, energy, automotive are using MQTT. So I will launch the poll and uh, parallelly let's move on to q and A. I I request you all uh, to participate and cast your votes. Uh, there are lots of interesting questions coming in. So um, Shailendra Kumar is asking, is the session established, authenticated in any way? How the interface is secured uh, from someone trying to intercept the traffic? Really good question. Um, so um, so MQTT works on, can work on top of TLS and we absolutely recommend to use TLS to establish the, the secure connection. You can also do, um, you also can authenticate a client, um, right? So, and the authentication could be certificates, it could be username and password, um, it, it's pretty flexible, but, but you can, when you connect a client, you can require authentication information for, from, from the client and it's built in the standard. At Hive Q, we actually add, we have a security extension that helps with that workflow to make it easy. And basically what we do is we use, um, kind of we have an interfaces into uh, databases so you can access rule uh, kind of using passwords. We can introduce um, interface with OAuth systems. Um, to, to make it kind of easy, easy for people. People will typically keep their device authentication information in some type of repository. Um, so we want to make it easy to, to integrate with that. Cool. Thanks, Ian. I will move on to the next question. Uh, Dave is asking, can you talk about how Sparkplug differs from vanilla MQTT? Sure. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I can, but I, I can't really get into a lot of the details because it's, it's a completely another webinar. Um, but at, at a high level, um, Sparkplug adds the payload format, right? So MQT is basically payload agnostic, right? So, and what Sparkplug does is it starts to define, okay, if this is a sensor, here's how you represent the temperature. Here's how you re re represent the, 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 the pressure um, in that. So everyone now, all the different kind of vendors, all the different types of the sensors are all transmitting the same the consistent format of kind of what that that representation of the temperature looks like right and then if you have a historian or an MES system right they understand that that format and, and can 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 kind of relate to that, that format so that's one part of spark plug the other part of spark plug spark plug um, is what i call the life cycle of of a client so when a client joins a spark plug system um, it will issue a birth message, right? So basically it says, I am a new, new device in the system. Um, you need to start listening to me, right? Similarly, if a device leaves, um, uh, it, it will say, I, I'm done, I'm out of here. So stop listening to me, right? So for instance, if you've got a historian or a SCADA system, right? Um, the birth message will say, kind of tell the SCADA system or the historian say, um, you need to show start showing the information from this 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 um, message or the, this device, um, and that would just be automatic, right? And similarly, if when the device turns itself off, right, um, the death message will will kind of send a message to 
the, 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 those applications and they'll be able to, they should be able to respond to that. Okay, so like I said, there's more details. Um, I encourage you to go look at the ebook. Thanks, Ian. Uh, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, Ramaya is asking, are there any licensing requirements or any permissions required to use NQTT? No, no, absolutely not. Um, so NQTT is, is um, an open standard. It's done done through OASIS, um, which is a well-known standard body. Um, so so the, the protocol itself, anyone can implement. Um, now, that's just a standard. And kind of, so how do you use it, right? So there's a lot of open source implementations of the standards. Um, Hydrogen Q has a, a, what we call a Hydrogen Q Community Edition. So we have a version of our, of our broker um, in, in, in open source, you can find it on GitHub. Um, and then you need client, clients. Um, so we actually have a Java client um, for, for people that they, they can use it. It's all open source. Um, Eclipse uh, Paho, which is a very well known um, open source project, um, has different language binders. They have a C, C binding. I believe they have a Python um, client uh, and, and other language binding. Right? So, so, absolutely, it's, it gets. Um, it's, it's very easy and free to get going. Um, where Hydrant, what Hydrant Q does is, is we sell a commercial uh, broker um, and kind of to get the, the reliability characteristics of, of kind of highly scalable, highly reliable, you need to run a, a broker in a clustering environment. Um, and to, to do that, you need our commercial version uh, to do that. Okay. But to, to get going is absolutely um, uh, yeah, free to use. Cool. Thanks, Ian. Uh, let me move on to the next question. Uh, Prasanna is asking uh, how to connect the legacy systems. Do we have any gateways? Do you have any pharma manufacturing related use case? Um, so we, we definitely work with pharma companies. I, I can't kind of divulge kind of the, the, the company names. Um, if you want to reach out, we could certainly kind of talk kind of in more, in more details about that. So I think your, your comment about gateways and, and Jishri, maybe we can turn Prashana's uh, kind of mic on, but I, my, my guess is kind of how do you get the, the information from the factory floor um, into MQDT? And often what people are using are, are what called gateways, right? So there could be a, a, a a PLC vendor, so Opto 22, PLC Next from Phoenix Contact, um, um, have the ability to connect to different protocols, different uh, kind of, uh, legacy uh, hardware, um, and convert that data into MQT and send it on. Right. So there's also software gateways out there um, that can can do that. HydroQ doesn't actually have a, a gateway. Um, we, we we partner with with other companies to do that. So Prashanna, did, did I answer your question or should we turn your mic on to see if, if, that, if that's... Um... Uh, Prasanna, I've unmuted you. I, you can actually unmute yourself and ask further. Yeah, hi. Hi, thanks, Jeshri. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that's what, uh, like, uh, see, in power manufacturing, we will have a... Can you hear me, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we will have a lot of uh, legacy instruments and uh, that, that doesn't have any protocols to connect or sometimes it's like closed systems will be there like uh, HPLCs and all. So how to push those kind of uh, data is what my question, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, so, 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 and so like I said, like typically people, what we see people doing is, is introducing um, kind of more of the next generation PLCs in mm -hmm. front uh, of, of those uh, those legacy hardware to, and, and then what they'll end up doing is they'll kind of connect a number of, of legacy information, right? So, and you aggregate into the, the next generation PLC to, to kind of convert it into MPT messages. Okay. okay. Um, but feel free to reach out and we can certainly um, talk in more detail about kind of things like farm use cases too, if you'd like. So. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Prasanna, for the question. Thanks, Ian, for the answer. Uh, let me move on to the next question. Um, I'm not sure uh, who is it from. It's from Anonymous. Given uh, data must still be mapped to MQTT brokers for MQTT to work, given that 
an industrial plant might have a variety of assets. Is there a way to simplify this task? Yeah, no, no. It, it's it's so um, kind of designing entity topic structures, um, right? Um, it is I think what, what you're getting to. Um, so I think Spark plug um, absolutely starts that that way, depending on your on your use, use case. If if you're doing, a, you know, you said industrial plant, right? So so I would look at Spark plug. Um, because what that does is basically it specifies kind of how do you, how how all these how the data format needs to be need, needs to look right. Then you need to kind of make sure the assets that you have can kind of create Spark plug messages, right? And so a gateway would it would be able to help do that, right? So something like Octo twenty two, right, can take data from a Siemens uh, uh, PLC and convert it into a Spark plug message, for, for instance, right? Um, I think they can even do it out things like Alan Bradley devices too, right? So, um, so, so that that would be a, a kind of a starting point. I would I would suggest you you look at. Okay. Thanks, Ian. Uh, I will move on to the next question. Louis is asking: Is MQTT or HiveMQ only advisable for big businesses, or can it be also recommended for small businesses? And startup businesses. Sure. Um, so, so uh, absolutely. Um, but let, let me let's just kind of break it down. Um, so, as I answered beforehand, kind of NQTT is freely available, right? So, um, so if you um, are a small startup, right? There's open source implementations. The protocol is free, right? You absolutely can use it, and it, it, it's free. Um, where it gets tricky is if you are if your startup becomes very successful right and you have a lot of clients a lot of messages moving through um a lot of the open source brokers can't don't don't scale they don't have the reliability because they're, they're not working in a clustered environment um and that's where you would, you would move to god and cure right but absolutely um how do you the commercial edition like we, you could absolutely start with our, our open source version. There's other open source versions of, of MQT brokers out there too. Um, but when you get to what I would call business critical, right? When you're kind of running a kind of large successful business, right? Um, then then you need to be looking at uh, MQT. Like we have lots of startups as customers, um, but it becomes basically core to their startup business um, that they have a reliable broker. Thanks, Ian. Uh, let me move on to the next question. Uh, Jacob is asking, can we use MQTT um, over all media for WAN connectivity, Ethernet or all protocols? Yes, so, 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 so uh, MQTT really requires uh, TCP IP. It run, runs over TCP IP, right? So, so you basically just need to have a TCP IP connection to run MQTT, right? Um, so it, it's at that, that it's at the application layer of, of the, the stack, right? So, so if you can, if you have a network that can give you a TCP IP connection, you can use MQTT. Cool. Thanks, Ian. I'll move on to the next question. Uh, Quang is asking a really interesting question. Does it make sense to ask IoT device to send an acknowledge message in response to a command request from the cloud or just rely on MQTT QoS? Is it overkill to build in this functionality at the application level? So I, I, I'm going to answer it in two ways. One, it, it, it's going to depend on, on your use case, I think. Um, and, and two, I would actually, so I'm probably not the best person to answer that question too. Um, so I would, what we can do is we'll follow up this, or if you want to ask it on a community forum, um, some people with, Deep, deep technical knowledge of MQTT could probably uh, help you with that question. Um, but my guess is they're going to say it will depend on your use case too. So sorry, I couldn't be more specific there, um, but I, I don't want to mislead you there. Um, but, yeah. Thanks, Ian. Uh, we have uh, one question I think you have already answered. Steph, Stefan uh, is asking, does it, MQTT has kind of a domain name mechanism? Is it easy to migrate to another broker without reconfiguring clients? Um, well, so, so you have to, uh, each client has to have the URL of the broker, yeah, right? Um, so um, so if, if you can keep the URL, 
consistent, right? Um, you're you're good to go, right? But but if 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 you're you're migrating to a different broker, um, you and you can't take the URL, then you're gonna have to reconfigure the client. Thanks, Ian. Uh, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, you Tsang is asking what version of MQTT is supported by current Hive MQ? We, we support all of them, right? I um, mean, we support three, three one, three one one, and five. Um, and I'll just put a plug in here, like this. Um, if you're looking at different IoT platforms, um, you need to check on that, right? Because, for instance, um, Azure IoT and AWS IoT don't support MQTT five, um, and they actually don't support the complete specification either, right? So I can't remember which ones, but some of them don't support things like retain messages, um, for instance, right? So, and and they most don't kind of, I, I believe both don't support QS2, right? So, um, so Hive and Q absolutely supports 100% specifications. Thanks, Ian. Uh, you Tsang has a follow-up question. Is it possible to get legacy web RTU connected to Hive MQ MQTT? So let's let's um, open. I, I don't know what web RT, RT is, unfortunately. So um, so, you saying that maybe you could open his 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 um, kind of connection. Um, but again, it's 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 a TCP/IP um, connection, right? So if web RT you has a TCP/IP connection underneath, then the answer is going to be yes. If it doesn't, it's going to be very difficult. Thanks, Ian. I think we have. Let's, 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 let's take one, one. There's one on the 5G network. Let's take that one, and then we're going to have to call it a day. We're, uh, so, um, sure, sure. Um, Ramaya is asking so, probably a strange question. Suppose we have a 5G network for a group of IoT devices, what way MQTT can be utilized? I don't actually think this is a strange question because I think this is going to be the future um, for, for a lot of uh, industries. Um, and, and we're actually working with, with, with some of the, the telco vendors here. Um, so 5G networks have IP addresses, TCP IP addresses, right? And so we've been working with uh, Vodafone in, in Europe. Um, and I'm not sure how much you know about kind of the, the architecture of, of 5G networks, but there's something called the mobile edge computing platform, right? So they basically have data centers um, um, for the 5G networks um, that are very close to, to the 5G towers, right? Um, and in Vodafone, they're designing a, a, a platform, a B2X a vehicle to everything platform based around MQTT, right? So they have Hive and Q there um, to, to power that. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so, so it's absolutely gonna be it's absolutely relevant. Um, basically, the, the broker will run on the MEC of, of the network. Um, the, the clients connecting to the 5G need to be MQTT um, clients transmitting uh, MQTT messages and, and the broker will be in, be in, in the MEC. So hopefully that answers your question, but, but I think kind of V2X is, is an is a important use case. Um, I think um, uh, manufacturing is gonna be an important use case. Um, around there too, okay? All right, um, so I think we'll call it a day. Um, I really appreciate the questions, Re really great questions. So so thank you. And it's always great to have the involvement of, of the community here. Um, please feel that my contact information is here. Um, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any, any other questions. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. And thank you, thank you for joining us. We'll have another webinar next, next month. Um, we don't know the topic yet, but we'll get it up to you as soon as possible. So Jayashree, do you want to wrap it up? Yep. Thank you so much for attending, everyone. Uh, we will be sharing the recording as well as the slide deck in a follow-up email. We will also share the resource links uh, in the follow-up email. And um, see you all in the next session. Take care. Bye-bye.